things are pretty exciting this morning, uh, as you could well imagine. Uh, the activity yesterday kind of shocked me. I uh, thought that with the 50 basis point uh, decline, we would see a pretty much a happy response in the markets, and especially in equities. I was also expecting bonds to uh, maybe drop a little bit more, but we didn't see that yesterday, but we're seeing it today. So, well, no, not so much on the bonds, but yes, on the equities. So we'll try to explain what I think is going on with regard to bonds right now, as well as what's happening with equities. Uh, but in any case, we have a strong move up across the board, Tesla, passing levels of yesterday up 11 the last time I checked, but we'll do a double check on that just in a few minutes. We'll start with a report from AJ, unsurprisingly, since he seems to get us the best stats almost every single day. He says this about Europe. He says Tesla's third quarter after the first two months is up 11 percent or 3.5 thousand units ahead of second the second quarter. In the final month of a quarter is always the key month and probably going to do OK in the in the uh, in uh, September. We'll see. Um, and then he says Tesla's market share increased in August to 17.2% from 12.6%. i am assuming he's talking about BEV market share. I don't think that's overall market share. And then uh, Tesla's Europe BEV market share has been uh, seen the largest month over month uh, uh, increase in 17 months and market share increased for the third consecutive month by 17, to 17.2% as mentioned. And uh, then finally, he says that Tesla's total car market market share has been increasing for two consecutive months. Market share there increased by uh, by six basis points to 2.31%. Yeah, there you go. So that is the overall market share, not just of BEVs. So that was good news. And then you've got Tesla insurance registrations in China. This is not him. This is in general. Tesla's insurance registrations in China totaled 15,600, another really good number. Uh, that is down a bit uh, from the previous week. But of course, that could mean more exports. Uh, according to data from this, the China News uh, Post, uh, two weeks left in the third quarter, Tesla registrations in China are up 26 compared to the last quarter and have increased more than 20% versus a year ago. So maybe Elon will be right. Maybe we'll be looking at that more than 1.8 million for the year after all. Tesla's China vehicle registrations in quarter three are also now nearly 5% above quarter four of 2023. This is the best ever quarterly performance. Tesla's year-to-date China registrations have also turned positive in recent weeks. So far in 2024, Tesla's registrations in China up 2%, compared to the same time frame in 2023. Forbes has a report out this morning. Forbes, yeah, no friend of Elon. Yeah, no. Um, they have an article out today. Uh, I it's, it's entitled, The Cybertruck in the Room, colon, why Elon Musk isn't on the Forbes sustainability leaders list. Their first one ever. They're putting out a sustainable leaders list. They're writing an entire article explaining why Elon Musk is not on the sustainability list. And something about there, this is not an all time, this is not like uh, a lifetime achievement award. It's what you've done in the last year or two. <laughs> and uh, that he was discussed a lot. That they talked about Elon a lot as a possibility for being on the list. The article is so filled with bias that I was afraid I would gag if I fully reported it. There's no mention of power walls, no mention of mega packs, VPPs. He slams the Cybertruck as late, even as, of course, it becomes the number one selling BEV in the market and is by every indication from everybody that's ever reviewed it, uh, a technological marvel and likely to become maybe even the best selling electric uh, pickup truck. Uh, not just electric pickup truck, but maybe within a couple of years could be the number one selling pickup truck. Um, he does mention, of course, uh, you know, X and Elon's politics, uh, you know, in the in the uh, decision making process. Anyway, if you want to be enraged, I'm sure you can find the article. You've got the title. Go find it. Um, Elon Musk says this morning, he says the Starship 5 is built and ready to fly. Starship 6 will be ready to fly before Flight 5 even gets approved by the FAA. And this is sad. 
I have to say, it is very sad. This is Randy Kirk. It's time to hit that like button. You always got to remember to do that. Hit the subscribe button. Remember now, there's new people here every day. So those of you who watch one or two or three of my videos per day, I'm sorry. I repeat this all the time, but you know, there's new people coming on. We have to remind them. Hitting notify is really critical because there's so much good stuff coming. Later today, we've got Sir Basher. I mean, how much better does it get than that? And then tonight, we we have Bradford Ferguson. I'm sure he'll have a lot to say about that Fed rate cut. Uh, over the weekend, we're going to have uh, Warren Redlick back. Yeah, Warren Redlick's going to be up. So lots of reasons to hit that subscribe button. And then a whole bunch of reasons to also hit the button down below where you can get a link and go over to Patreon and join Patreon and participate in supporting my show. All right. In the week ending September 14th, the advance figure for seasonally adjusted initial claims, these are labor claims, you know, unemployment claims, was 219,000, a decrease of 12,000 from the previous week's revised level, which was revised up by 1,000. So it was 230 last week. Now it's 231, but now we're down to 219 this week, would indicate, you know, labor market in good shape. Fed's move, 50 basis points, gets confusing a little bit, except, of course, as uh, as Jeff Lutz pointed out last night, we had this big gap between inflation and interest rates, making the, the Fed's interest rates and also the bond interest rates, this massive gap, it had to be filled. That's really what I think the Fed is doing. And it's kind of an insurance policy. That's what we talked about last night. Well, the four-week moving average was 227, a decrease of 3,500 on the four-week moving average. The advanced number for seasonally adjusted insured unemployment during the week ending September 7th was 1.829 million, a decrease of 14,000. And that last week's level was reduced by 7,000. So the, the news in labor is good. And again, we... There's, I'm a little nervous about what's going to happen going forward. But in general, I think the stock market and eventually the economy is going to do just fine. From the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index this morning, manufacturing activity in the region was mixed overall, according to the firm's September Manufacturing Business Outlook survey. Now, this is a survey that's done in, you know, last week, okay? They spent a week calling a bunch of businesses and asking them a bunch of questions. The survey's indicator for current general activity turned positive. The indexes for new orders and shipments declined and turned negative. That's not good. The employment index rose and suggested increases in employment overall, and both price, and both price indices moved higher. The price, they, those two indices would be what they're paying for their raw materials or incoming products and what they're having to charge for, for uh, uh, their, their customers. Both of those were moving higher and continue, and continue to indicate overall increases in prices. Now, of course, 2 to 3%, everybody be okay with that. Uh, they should really want to be under 2 But anyway, the firms continue to expect growth over the next six months with expectations more widespread this month. So they're getting more positive about expectations coming up. Then you have the Conference Board of Leading Economic Indicators, the LEI, which nobody pays. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but they don't. Nobody's paying any attention to it. But it declined by 0.2% in August, following an unrevised 0.6% decline in July. Over the six-month period between February and August, the LEI fell by more than 2.3%. This is a smaller rate of decline than the 2.7% drop over the previous six months, but it's still a 2.3% decline. So this is leading in economic indicators. This is not just manufacturing. This is overall. And this is why my, that I believe, you've heard me say it, other people believe with me, people that are way more way smarter than me, believe that we've been in a recession or we're going into recession right now. In August, the U.S. LEI remained on a downward trajectory and posted a sixth consecutive monthly decline, according to Justiana Zabinska La Monica. And uh, she's the senior manager of business cycle indicators at the conference board. The erosion continued to be driven by new orders, which recorded its lowest value since just like the Philadelphia Fed. A negative interest rate spread, persistently gloomy consumer expectations of future business conditions, and lower stock prices after the early August financial market tumult weighed on the index. 
Overall, the LEI continued to signal headwinds to economic growth ahead. Conference Board expects U.S. real GDP growth to lose momentum in the second half of this year as higher prices, elevated interest rates, and mounting debt erode domestic demand. However, in Fed, I'm sorry, however, in the Fed's September 2024 summary of economic projection, policymakers suggested 100 basis points of interest rate cuts are likely by the end of the year, and that should lower borrowing costs and support stronger economic activity in 2025. All right, so this is exactly what I've been saying for months, and that is the first half of the year was fine. The recession started in June. We will have headwinds for the rest of this year. Uh, it will be not horrible. It will be, people won't even say, oh, you know, it's terrible out there. It'll continue to be about like it's been where people under $100,000 in income will be saying, I can't afford my bills. I can't afford to go out and buy a new refrigerator, even though this one's on its last legs. That's what we're going to see, even with this interest rate decline. This is not, the impact on this is three to four months away. But by the beginning of next year, whoever wins, okay, at this point with the Fed lowering interest rates, it won't really matter who wins. Next year, we'll see economic growth again, barring any weirdness, okay? There's always weirdnesses that could impact. You could have, you know, the Saudi, the, the OPEC nations decide to, you know, cut back 5 million barrels a day in oil production or something like that. I mean, some really weird thing or some war. These things can always impact and cause problems. But overall, there's a chance, a chance, I'm going to keep saying this, there's a chance that the Fed shouldn't have moved and shouldn't have moved 50 basis points. But I really feel they had to fill that gap and create for them some kind of insurance policy. It gives them some flexibility going forward to not move at all the rest of the year. That's possible if the economy is stronger than expected. And of course, that kind of stuff we will learn over the next few weeks. All right. We also have the uh, breaking news from my, my, we have sales of previously owned homes fell 2.5% to an annual rate of 3.86 million in August. The National Association of Realtors said Thursday, that's the number of homes that would be sold over an entire year, of course. The August sales number refers to deals closed. Um, existing home sales data is reported. Uh, they're just telling how they do their thing. The pace of sales fell short of expectations of economists that were surveyed by the Dow Jones Newswires and the Wall Street Journal. Compared to August, 2023, home sales are down 4.2%. And prices, though, continue up about 3%. Um, median price of an existing home in August rose 3.1%. That's the highest price on record for the month of August. About one in five homes were sold above list prices, which is down from 24% a month ago. So about 20% as opposed to 24%. And homes received an average of 2.4 offers. The total number of homes listed on the market rose by 22% from a year ago. That's good news. It might help to moderate the sales increases that you would expect given this decrease, the decrease in mortgage rates. Now, remember, these mortgage rates have already gone down. All right, they've gone from 8 to 6.2. They have dropped almost to 200 basis points, almost two full percentage points. The Fed is talking about that 200 basis point cut over the next year, okay? So don't expect mortgage rates to go down a lot more. Probably going to drop down into, maybe into the fives, but the high fives, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but I just want to caution you, most of the mortgage rate cuts are in already. Not going to see a lot more. Not going to drop down into the fours. Maybe there'll be a day or a week or, you know, as things move around, you might, maybe there might be a point where it's five something. But for most homeowners today, the idea, or people that want to buy a new home today, the idea is to buy it now before the prices go up further, because they will, um, or maybe even over the winter like last year. And so you can buy the home now, you can get, get in on an interest rate in the high, low sixes or high fives, and then... If they really do go down more next year because the Fed cuts even more than expected or market to the treasuries continue to drop because inflation is even better than we think, then you refinance. And there's lots of programs out there. If you want to talk to my friend, Bill Raymond, his information is down below. He is amazing at what he does. All right. So where are the markets now? Let's go ahead. Um, 
We have got, things are about where they were when I last looked. You got the Dow Jones up 416 points, NASDAQ up 451, S&P up 91, and Tesla up $11.72 to 238.83. And for some people, there was some kind of uh, mar market magic around 235, 236. So if we stay up at these levels, uh, that would be kind of a breakthrough. I, of course, expect it to go to 265. Prior to 1010, we are definitely uh, marching on that path. Apple is up strongly today at 839. Uh, Meta up 15 Microsoft up eight, Nvidia up five seventy nine. Remember that would be fifty seven dollars just a few weeks ago before the split. So um, yeah, so the Magnificent Seven all up. All of the Kathy Woods are up. Everybody is having a joyful day. So we need to celebrate. So, did somebody bring the champagne? All right. Uh, percentage wise, we have the Dow up a full percent. We have the Nasdaq up 2.6%. Yet S&P up 1.64% and Tesla up 5.2%, which is about right. Uh, it is following the market today. It is not moving under its own steam. It's got its normal uh, spread between uh, what it does and what the Nasdaq is doing. All right. So let's go take a look at those bonds because this is where the action might be a little different than what you were expecting given the rate cut. So you've got the 10-year is up 4.3 basis points, back over 3.7 at 3.73. Now, why is that? Was because it's anticipating the rate cut, and it must have been even been anticipating that it might be five basis points, 50 basis points. <laughs> I'm okay. But here is the action that is, is, is sorry, I don't... I don't, this is the action that I was expecting. This is what this is what you should be expecting. All right. So you've got the 10 year up 4.3, but you've got the two year down nine tenths of a basis point, and you've got the two month down 3.2 basis points. So you now have the two month and the 10 year is only 100 basis point spread compared to the 150, 140 that it's been, you know, just a month ago and 130 that it was even a week ago, all right? This is what I said last week. The two month will now rally and it's got to come back down and reinvert, okay? It's not investment advice, but the two month is going to continue to rally like crazy and the two year will continue to rally and the 10 year will probably, we're probably about where we're going to get, okay? I mean, we're up 4.7 basis points right now at 3.734. We're not going to go a ton higher than this. This is this is about where we're going to go. And then we'll have, you know, up and down days. Now, ultimately, as we get deeper into next year, maybe later this year, but if we get the next two cuts, maybe we'll start seeing it go to that 3.25. Or if inflation numbers really come in low, you can start seeing it moving closer to that 3.25 level, which I've talked about before. All right, let's go ahead and take a look where we are with bonds. I'm sorry, did that already? Oil, <laughs> oil up a little bit this morning. Uh, of course, the dollar should be retreating. We'll see whether that's true. Um, oil, and, and that would mean that oil would, would be going up, but it's up 75 cents is all at 71.66 for Texas, up 83 at 74.47 for Brent. And so that's about the normal $3 spread. Natural gas down a bit after rallying, rallying at $2.25, $2.24 uh, and a half cents, up one, I mean, sorry, down 1.66%. Gold slightly up at $3.60. It is at 2,602, back over that 2,006 level. And silver also up 1.26 at 31. Uh, copper up 0.84. At 4.33, that's a strong, a strong price. The dollar is slipping according to the headline. And then if you look at the actual numbers, it is up against both the, the yen and the euro. So the headline is already wrong. Up 0.52 against the Japanese yen, up 0 .8, 0 0.08 against the euro. And then uh, the Bitcoin loving the Fed news, apparently, up 3,118 at 63,413. So there you go for those of you in that market. Uh, all right, so going back and taking another look at Tesla real quick. Uh, Tesla now up $12.50. There we go. Maybe we'll break 240 here in a second. 
Uh, but all markets are up and to the right. Uh, it's a lovely morning. So hit like just because you're happy. Hit like and subscribe. If you have never sub subscribed yet, hit subscribe because it's a great day. And then hit notify. And we'll see you later today. Oh, by the way, yes, Scott Walter and I did a great, uh, as always, Scott, you know, comes on with amazing stuff. If you want to see that, we did the 10 questions. I don't know if he had exactly 10, but we did the questions that he's most interested in hearing if he could get in front of Elon Musk right now. And they, of course, they had lots of meat around those questions. So there's the card right there. Check that out. And then go down below right now, click it and join Patreon. It's been great talking to you.